Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem push dominoes. There are n dominoes in a line and they're placed vertically, uh, but some of them could be either leaning to the left or leaning to the right. And after each second passes, each domino that is, you know, leaning, I say the word leaning, but they say falling to the left, pushes the adjacent domino that's to the left of it. And the same thing with dominoes that are leaning towards the right. Uh, if there were two adjacent dominoes like this and this, right, like th how this one is leaning to the right, this one is leaning to the left, uh, you know, if they were leaning like this, then they would get stuck, right? One isn't going to fall over because they're both kind of pushing against each other. Uh, if there was a, a domino in the middle between these, uh, they would be leaning against the one in the middle, and then the one in the middle uh, would stay standing up. So basically, there are three states that a domino can be in. It can either be standing straight up, which is the simple case, right? And that is represented by a dot. And then left is meaning that the domino was pushed to the left. So this domino is pushed to the left. Now, a domino that's pushed to the left could, you know, be falling. It could be stuck like this one over here, right? This one is stuck leaning in the left position. Or it could be like this one, which is leaning to the left, and then maybe it actually just completely falls over uh, to the left side. That is also considered a status of L. Like, that, that state is included in this. So if it fell over to the left or it's just leaning to the left, it's still represented by a L. And that's actually a very important point that we're gonna use in this problem because it basically tells us that if a domino was initially leaning to the left, its state is always gonna be left because it's either gonna get stuck in this position or it's gonna completely fall over. In both cases, it's still left. Similarly with dominoes that are leaning to the right, if it's leaning to the right or if it falls over, it's still considered R. Okay, but enough abstractions, let's get into an example. Actually, before we do that, remember what we're trying to do is uh, get the final state of the dominoes. I didn't mention that yet, but that's pretty much what we're trying to do. Each second that passes, a domino could potentially, you know, get stuck like these ones. Or if there was, you know, this domino leaning to the right and this domino, maybe this domino will push this one over. But let's take a look at an example. Okay, so now let's take a look at a couple examples. The first one is pretty simple, so let's just start with it. So we have R, R, dot. L, so that means this domino is leaning to the right, this is leaning to the right, this is straight up, this one is leaning to the left. So after each second passes, each domino is going to tip over. Well, after one second, what's going to happen? Well, not much is going to happen. With these three dominoes, you can see they're both going to push up against this one at the same time. So pretty much they're going to get stuck like this, right? These three dominoes are going to get stuck. This one's not going to move. It's going to stay standing uh, straight up. But this one is just going to fall over, I guess. I don't know if it's going to push against this one because this one should push up against this one, but they're both already falling to the right. So it doesn't really change anything. I mean, maybe this one will completely fall over, but the state is not going to change. And that's the important part. The state here is still R, R dot L. So nothing really changed. But the second example is a bit more interesting. So the question is how to even approach this problem in a systematic way. Well, one thing I mentioned first was pretty important. Anything that starts out as left or right is always going to stay in that state. So we're, we're trying to look for the return state that we're going to, you know, return the dominoes in. Well, we know that these ones that I've highlighted are not going to change at all. What we have to figure out is what about the remaining ones? How are they going to change and how can we do that? Well, there's actually multiple solutions to this problem and you can check out some of them uh, officially on LeetCode if you want. One that they didn't mention though, I think is the simplest and it's actually pretty much the brute force. Not really brute force, but it's actually more of a simulation, right? Because this is the state that we're given, right? These are the dominoes that are leaning. And so, of course, the ones that are standing straight up, they're not going to knock each other over. Only these dominoes that are left or right could knock other dominoes over. So these are the ones we should pay attention to. And by simulation, what I mean is we should check on the first go around, basically simulating a second, right? One second. What's going to happen after one second to our dominoes? To figure that out, we should probably look at these dominoes that are leaning over right now. And maybe these dominoes are going to knock other ones over. Maybe this domino is going to change to being right. Then on the second second, we should look at what that domino is going to do now. So basically, 
with each second, we're going to have a queue of dominoes that we're going to look at. Right now, our queue is this, these ones that I've highlighted. These are the ones we have to look at and see how they're going to affect the dominoes that they are uh, adjacent to. So I'm not going to draw out the entire thing in the interest of time, but we will code up the official solution. But what we're going to uh, say now is that these ones left, right, and all these have been added to a queue, right? And we're now we're going to process them in our queue. We're just going to do this from left to right because it's simple. We could do right to left if we wanted as well. But it is going to be important for us to do them in order. We should either do left to right or right to left, and you'll see why in a second. But now let's start at the left one. Okay, this one is leaning to the left. Uh, it's going to fall over to the left. The first thing we should ask ourselves, is there anything to the left of it? Yes, there is. Is that domino standing straight up? Yes, it is. So what's going to happen now? Well, this domino is going to knock over this domino. Yeah, so what we should do now, let's say this has been popped from our queue so we don't have to look at it again, and it'll obviously never knock over any different dominoes, but this one over here now is going to be a left domino. But the question you might be wondering is, if a domino is falling over to the left, right, this one left, uh, what if there was another domino to the right that was falling over there? So in that case, this one in the middle would not be changed to a left domino, it would actually stay the exact same. Well, that's why the order comes into play. We know that since this is the first domino, that there weren't any dominoes to the left of it that could have knocked it over to the right. And we know that because we started all the way at the left. But if we do get any dominoes that are leaning to the right, we don't know for sure that there aren't uh, that there isn't a left domino to the right of it that could make the one in the middle stand straight up. And that's the example that we're actually faced with next. Now we have a right domino. And so it's leaning to the right. What is to the right of it? A, a domino standing straight up. So of course this one should be changed to right. But before we confirm that it should be changed to right, we should look at the domino actually one space over and confirm that this is not a left domino. In this case, it's not a left domino. So uh, we were correct. This domino in the middle is going to be to the right. But if there was a left domino over here, then we would not have changed this one in the middle. But for now, let's cross this out and then let's go to the next domino in our queue, which is going to be this one that is leaning to the left. And we look at the value to the left of it. It's a domino standing straight up. So it's going to be changed to a left domino. Again, we didn't have to check the value to the left of it to check that it was a right domino because we only have to do that with right dominoes anyway. And that'll probably make a bit more sense when we actually get into the code because it's kind of hard to kind of explain in words exactly what I mean. But basically what I'm saying is if there was a right domino over here, then we would have detected, okay, there's a left domino over here. And then we would have said, okay, then the one in the middle is standing straight up. So then on the next iteration, when we'd pop from our queue, we'd actually just skip this domino because we already know that these two dominoes counteracted each other. And then we'd go to the next domino. But that wasn't the case. So we don't have to do that. But that's why anytime we have a left domino, we don't actually have to check uh, what came before it. Okay. Now to this domino, oh, by the way, we're done with this one. So let's cross it out. Now to this right domino, uh, let's kind of fast forward. Okay, there's a standing straight up domino. What about what comes after it? Is there a left domino here? Nope. So in that case, uh, this domino is actually going to be changed to a right domino because this one tipped this one over. Uh, and then we're done with this one. Uh, and then we get to our last domino over here. And this domino knocks over the one that's to the left of it. So that one becomes a left domino. And then we're done with that. Now, notice how all of that happened within one second. That was our first iteration through our queue. And in one second, we updated the state of all the dominoes. But remember, we're not looking for one second. We're looking for the final state of the dominoes. How do we even know if we reached the final state? Well, basically, after our queue is empty, because right now we have a bunch of new dominoes that were just tipped over. Either these dominoes are going to be standing, you know, going to basically be caught together, basically stuck, or they have been knocked over uh, to being flat. But basically, to figure that out, we will have to continue through this queue. 
Okay, first domino over here, it's leaning to the left. There's nothing to the left of it though, so I guess this domino didn't really do anything. Obviously its state didn't change, it's still a left domino, but we don't have to look at it in our queue anymore. Okay, next domino is a right domino. Okay, so we look at what's to the right of it. It's a domino standing straight up. But now, is there another domino that's leaning to the left? The reason we're checking that is because in this case, that would mean that two dominoes are causing the one in the middle to be stuck. And that's exactly the case here. So in this case, this right domino over here is not gonna knock this one over because there's a left domino over here, so it's gonna be standing straight up. So in this case, we do pop this from our queue, but this one does not change. And since we already saw that this one, this domino is leaning to the left and it's causing this one to be stuck, we don't even have to look at this one. We actually skip this domino. So we pop this one even though we didn't do anything with it because we know that these two uh, caused each other to be stuck. You'll have to pay attention to how I handle this in the code. It's actually pretty simple in the code, but it's kind of hard to understand the intuition of why we're doing this. Okay, next we have a right domino. So we look at the one that comes after it. It's not a domino that's standing straight up. It's a left domino. So we don't do anything. So what we would say with this right domino is, okay, it's not a, we can't knock it over. So we don't do anything. So we just pop this from our queue. Then we check this left domino. Is this standing straight up? Nope. The one that came before is not standing straight up, so we can't do anything either in this case, right? So we don't do anything with either of these. Now, in the context of this problem, that means that two dominoes were standing straight up and they were just kind of counteracting each other. Well, not straight up, but they were just leaning against each other, right? Okay, but now you can see that we have no more dominoes that are leaning over. I really hope I did this correctly, so... So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is kind of what our state would be, LL, you know, a bunch of characters. And I think that does match pretty much exactly with what they had in the output. So I think we're good to go. By the way, this uh, the time complexity of the solution is gonna be big O of N because in the worst case, every single domino could be added to the queue and then popped from the queue. So basically big O of N time complexity and also big O of N memory complexity because our queue is going to potentially contain every single domino that was given to us in the input. Believe it or not, this is actually the simplest solution in my opinion. It's the most intuitive. There's actually a few more complicated solutions, but they're also just as efficient as this one. So I think this one is the preferred solution in my opinion. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. First thing you're gonna notice is the dominoes are actually given to us in a string. It would probably be helpful for us to convert that into a list. The main reasoning is because as we're gonna be updating the dominoes, you can't really update a character in a string in Python. So if we convert it to a list, we can update the character at any index of that list. Also, don't forget, we're gonna be using a queue. So let's do that in Python, a double-ended queue. You can do like that. And then the way we wanna initialize our queue is basically, uh, first of all, I'm gonna enumerate through all the dominoes. So our list of dominoes, we're gonna get the index and the domino. That's what we're doing in Python here. I is the index, D is the domino. We want to add all the dominoes that are not standing straight up to our queue initially, right? Just like we did in the drawing, we want to queue.append each domino if it's not standing straight up. And actually, uh, we're gonna be adding a pair of values to our queue. So we're gonna actually include the index because you're gonna see that the index is actually gonna come in handy uh, because you know after we pop a domino from our queue, we wanna know the index of it so that we can check the neighbors of that domino. Okay, now uh, the code is gonna be pretty much similar to any uh, queue problems where you continue the loop until your queue is completely empty and each iteration of the loop, we just pop the uh, element from the queue. In this case, we're gonna pop the leftmost, uh, but from that, we're gonna get an index and a domino. So there's two cases, remember. The domino could be a left domino or it could be a right domino. We know it's not gonna be standing straight up because if it was, then we wouldn't have even added it to our queue. So if it's left or right, we know that the simple case, the more simple case is the left one, because in that case, all we really have to do is check that its left neighbor is standing straight up, because that means we just tipped our left neighbor over. How do we know that our left neighbor exists and is standing straight up? Well, first of all, I has to be greater than zero, because if it's zero, that means we don't have any left neighbors. So if I is greater than zero, and if the left neighbor, which we can get from Dom, 
index i minus one, you can see that the index is helpful here. If i minus one is equal to a dot, that means our left neighbor is standing straight up. What does that mean? Well, we're going to, first of all, add our left neighbor to the Q. Its index is i minus one, and its value is now gonna be left because we just tipped it over. Uh, and don't forget to actually update it in the dominoes list itself because remember that's what we're actually gonna return in the end. i minus one is now gonna be left. And that's pretty much all there is for the left case. The right case is a bit more complicated because as we're going to the right, there could be more dominoes to the right that we haven't seen yet. Uh, one thing you might notice though from this code is we have two nested if statements. We could actually get rid of the second one uh, and combine it with the first one, but I think it's a little bit less intuitive if I just wrote that straight off the bat. So let's do that. And now the opposite case. First, we wanna check that we do have a right neighbor. How do we know if we have a right neighbor? Well, i has to be less than the length of dominoes minus one. There has to be at least one domino to the right of it and that domino has to be standing straight up. So i plus one, actually to make this a bit more clearer, let's just say that i plus one is less than the length of domino, right? So that basically says that i plus one is a valid index. So then we use that index and then check if it's standing straight up. That means we could potentially knock it over but we can't knock it over if there exists an i plus two index. Basically, that means there's, a, there's actually another domino to the right of this one that's standing straight up, and that domino happens to be a domino that's leaning to the left. So if that's the case, which we can check pretty easily like this, uh, that means we can't knock this domino over. That means this domino is stuck. But what should we do now? Well, we should pop from the queue one more time. Uh, the reason we're doing this is if we don't pop this domino right here that's leaning to the left, that means on the next iteration of the loop, we're gonna visit that domino again, and then uh, our code is gonna run, and then this first if statement is gonna run. And what's gonna happen is this left domino is gonna knock over this one, even though it shouldn't, because this one is in between two dominoes, a right domino and a left domino. So this one should not be knocked over. That's why we're popping this left domino to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we're basically skipping this domino, but that's only if uh, that left domino exists to the right of this one. If that's not the case though, then it's the slightly more simple case where we just do the generic thing, uh, basically tip this domino over and then append it to the queue, just like we kind of did up above. So I'm actually just gonna copy and paste these two lines, uh, copy paste, and then say, okay, domino, in this case, not i minus one, but i plus one is gonna be set to a right domino because it just got knocked over. Uh, and bef uh, also we append it to the queue, i plus one, and it's a right domino, not a left domino. Okay, and believe it or not, that's the entire code. I know it kind of